Welcome to the Destiny Church Tees Valley podcast. As you listen, it is our prayer that you were transformed through faith, hope, and love. Well, good morning. And uh, it's so good to see God changing lives. And we do give God the praise and the glory for all that those that are involved in the uh, Moses Project do. And uh, the many lives that they have seen. And uh, I think I was talking to uh, Brian a few days ago. And he was saying, I think they've got about 15 guys in uh, rehabs around the country at the moment. So it's just testament to their um, to, to their work, their heartbeat to God to change someone who was a um, successful businessman and to take him and change his circumstances, change his vision, change his perspective and give, me, give him a heart uh, for those who are hurting and going through difficult times. Fantastic. Amen. Um, one of the things though is that just as we're looking at Ukraine on our news, and obviously we can think about Moses' project, we can think of any number of issues, um, we all suffer um, hurts in our life. And um, I, would, I used to grow up with a, a kind of a rhyme that used to say, sticks and bones may break my bones, but calling me names won't harm me. And, um, and I used to think that was, that was right. But actually, as I've grown up and I've seen so many people's lives, that actually the things that are said to us often go so much deeper and often can last a lifetime unless they are dealt with, um, that the healing process for these things. And we know from, for example, in Ukraine and the war that's going on there, uh, for, for many of them, and particularly the guys, but a lot of civilians are getting hurt physically. Now, for many of them, they will recover uh, relatively quickly from the physical wounds, but the, the, the inner hidden wounds that they will go through, um, that they will incur, they will often need, uh, some of them will need professional help, will need people to walk them through the process. And, uh, and we know how many people have been away to war. They come back and their physical wounds are quickly healed, relatively speaking. But their inner wounds, their, their, in their mind, in their heart, in their emotions, in their relationships, some of them wounds, um, they, they, they are scars that, uh, that take, uh, for some people, they never get over them. And so today I want to talk about that, that God is our healer. He is our, uh, is our physician. He's our doctor. He's the one who can heal both our physical needs, but also our hidden needs, our hidden wounds that we go through um, that, that, are, that really do need to be, uh, to be dealt with. And, um, and so I believe if we can, if we can learn uh, these things, then it will really make a difference in our in our lives. Amen? So <clears throat> the issue, of course, is the question is, where do we often get these hidden wounds in our life from? Well, we can get them from everywhere. <laughs> um, often as children, we get hidden wounds from things that are spoken into our lives. We can, um, we, we can have things said to us, maybe from parents or from brothers, sisters, um, sometimes it may be teachers at school, it might be people in the playground, people that you play with. All sorts of things could be spoken into your life that actually, at a, particularly at a young age, you don't have the, often the mental awareness to be able to recognize the difference between what is just lies, what is just being spoken wrongly over your life, and the truth. And we struggle with those, those issues, and particularly we can pick them up everywhere. We can pick them up from society, um, we, you know, wrong, uh, wrong, wrong things that happen to us. Society has a way of prejudices, doesn't it, uh, so often against us and against certain people and uh, whatever it might be, and that can cause wounds. And, um, and so there's the workplace. The workplace can be another place where... Um, somebody can complain about you and then maybe the process 
uh, not only just what they've said or what they've criticized, you might think, well, that's not right, but maybe the process that it's dealt with can leave wounds. In other words, there are just so many parts of our lives where we can end up with hurts and, uh, and they're undealt with. They're not, uh, not, not um, done. And so I believe this morning I want us to kind of have a look at that. Uh, one of God's, uh, God's aspects to him, part of his character of who he is, one of his names uh, is Yahweh Rophe, which means uh, God who heals. Or God, uh, in one translation, God is our physician, is our doctor. He's the one that can bring healing. And he brings healing to us in so many different ways. Um, and we can see that through Scripture. Uh, we, we see uh, often in, um, in the Bible, you can see the strands of healing. Um, uh, you know, where the children of Israel go, uh, and, uh, and they're, they're wandering through the wilderness, and they come to a place called Moriah, and uh, known as a place of bitterness, and the, the, the water there is bitter. And what does Moses do? He throws in a stick, and it becomes uh, drinkable. And in other words, it's a part of a tree. And of course, through history and through the, the Old Testament, you can see this whole aspect coming until eventually the, the healer, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, came, and, uh, and he died on a tree so that we could be set free. And so there's a whole process. Scripture is just replete of us having that. And we know in the life and work of Jesus that, uh, that he, was, he went around healing people. And he healed them of so many different things, uh, not just physical, but of course their emotional um, and spiritual needs as well. He is our healer. And uh, so healing can mean a number of aspects to heal. And the word that's used for healing scriptures could mean to mend as in a garment, when you mend a garment, it can mean to repair as a building and reconstruction. And the guys that were around uh, yesterday, thank you to, to all of those of you, all of you who came. Uh, we got so much done. It was absolutely brilliant. So big thank you to all of you that took the time to, to come and be part of that. It can mean to cure, as in obviously what we're often using when we go to a doctor that gives us some antibiotics, maybe, or something like that. There's a disease, and we are cured of that. Um, it can mean to a way of expressing God's grace to us in restoring us spiritually to spiritual health. Um, and, of course, what we're going to talk about today means healing the brokenhearted. And I want to say to you that all of us have scars. All of us are broken in some place or other. All of us end up with these kind of wounds in our life. The question is, is what we do with them we, wounds, how we handle them wounds, and with a number of areas and things that we do. Um, but I wanted to, today to just to run through um, the, the kind of five steps. They don't always go in this order, but the five steps that we can see through Scripture, and we see it in the life of Jesus, um, of how we can heal the hidden wounds in our life. Amen? And uh, so he does that. Psalm 147 says, God heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. Well, <clears throat> today is the whole aspect of trying to look at how um, we see that in the life of Jesus and how he, he does that. And the first step begins with revealing your hurt revealing the hurt that is in your life. You're never going to get well unless you face the hurt in your life, unless you're able to kind of just be able to uh, know that it's there, acknowledge the hurt that's in your life. If you just kind of keep hiding it, it's never going to do that. So the problem of stuffing down our uh, hidden wounds is that it causes them to fester. Um, if ever you get a wound, whether it's just a simple scratch or whether uh, you have something more uh, severe or whatever, particularly when you do that, it starts to heal. And, um, and it depends what you do. If you keep kind of going to that wound and scratching that wound, you don't let it kind of heal, you don't let it thing, you just keep opening the wound, then what happens is, is it just festers and it actually becomes worse in your life. And so people try to deal with their physical wounds in different ways. And of course, that can cause numerous problems. Psalm 39, 
says this about just stuffing down the problems in our life. It says, I kept very quiet, but I became even more upset. I became very angry inside, and as I thought about it, my anger burned. In other words, it's like putting red-hot coals in your heart that, uh, that all it's going to do is cause more damage. It doesn't, it doesn't sort it out, but the more you hide it, the more you try to kind of stuff it inside the, the, the hidden wounds, it doesn't enable the healing process. It's the first part of the healing process is to acknowledge that you have a wound, that, that you've got a hurt, that there is some damage done, that you have been abused, or that there's some, somewhere or other someone has hurt you in some way, whether that be physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, or sexually, uh, we get hurt in so many ways. And, and, and I just know that so many people have, have got some horrendous wounds. And, um, and so maybe you're here today and you've had some of them. I was uh, brought up with uh, wonderful parents, and so I lived very much a sheltered life, but... Once you start to pastor and you start to respond with people and you hear some of the things that people go through, it is just horrendous. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, the percentages are that some of you have also gone through some horrendous situations and maybe today you're battling with them and that's why today it's important for you. But even if you've not suffered anything today, you can guarantee at some point in your life you're going to have to deal with some issues. You're going to have to deal with some wounds in your life. Um, and, and it's important that we don't let them fester in our life. I, I, I think one of the other things that sometimes is a result of, um, of hidden wounds is that they can exhaust us. We can be tired all the time. And we wonder why we're tired. And what's happening is we've only got so much energy, so much emotional energy and we end up spending our time thinking about these things and mulling over the, you know, how we've been hurt, how we've been wounded, uh, in what way we've been abused, whatever it might be, and it saps our energy. And when that, that and you've only got so much energy, and so what happens is if you allow that to, uh, uh, to, to fester and to, to take up your mental energy, your emotional energy, you will be tired. And we can get our emotional energy can be sapped through resentments and bitterness and, and, and hurts and, and guilts of, our, of things that we have done uh, to ourselves. And so the Bible says in Psalm 32, it says, When I kept things to myself, I felt weak deep inside me and I mourned, or oh, sorry, mooned, <laughs> mooned all day long. In other words, it is emotionally draining when we keep things inside and we've got to understand we live in a sinful world and in other words we are going to get we are going to be hurt uh, I hurt people you hurt people by the things we say the things we do and maybe the things we don't do we can't hurt people we can make promises and then not keep them promises and it's amazing how much that can affect people's lives and so people have different ways of dealing with the hurts in their life. Some just try to stuff it down. They just try to kind of, uh, some try to just forget it. Some try to run away from it. There's all sorts of different ways. People just kind of get involved in work and they become workaholics. Other people, they get involved in drunk or in drink or, or drugs or, you know, maybe just binge on TV, whatever it might be. There's all sorts of different ways people use to try to escape um, from the, the, their wounds rather than actually dealing uh, with them. And of course, some people blame others for them. And what happens when you don't reveal your hurts, when you, when you, when you, don't, when you keep them bottled down, it's like a can of Coke um, that's been shaken, and just at some point or other, the top is going to come off and things are going to spill out, and it's just going to become a mess everywhere. And so it's important that we do that. And so these issues do not work. And so the first step is we've got to be honest about the pain that we have, honest about our fear that we have, or our anger, or our resentment, or our bitterness about it. So I can hear you asking the question, yes, but honest with who? Well, the first person you've got to be honest with is yourself. 
So you've got to reveal it. You've got to be aware of it. You've got to say, yes, I have this issue. I have this wound. I have this hurt. I've had this abuse. I've had whatever it might be. And so that's the first. But the second person that you need to do is you need to reveal it to God in prayer. You need to say, God, I've been hurt in this situation. God, I know that I need you to heal me. And, and just reveal it to God. And so just acknowledge it. I, the, the thing is, I know this might be a surprise to you, but God already knows. He already knows your hurts. He already knows the wounds. He already knows the issues that you're struggling with in your life. So it's no surprise to him. And he just longs for that moment when you say to him, Lord, I acknowledge that I'm bitter in this area. I'm I'm struggling with this area. I'm frustrated in this area. Lord, this area is just taking up so much of my mental energy. Lord, I just struggle to forgive this person. Whatever it might be, we need to do that. And the third thing is, that we need to then reveal it to someone else. We need to reveal it to some other person. It doesn't need to be lots of people. It's just one person um, would, be, would be enough. Someone that you trust, that you can just acknowledge that to them. Now, if you don't have anybody like that in your life, um, or there's issues and you think, the people in my life, I trust them, but this is just too... So there are counsellors. We, we have contacts with some counsellors. Um, and uh, Christian counsellors, they are fantastic. They are exceptionally good, and, uh, and we can recommend them, and so that would be helpful. And, of course, depending on where you are, and so it's important that, uh, that you get help, but that you do actually uh, be honest with someone else um, in, in, uh, in your world. Amen? Because um, healing comes, first of all, through just revealing that hurt, Revealing the wound, revealing the pain, revealing what is in there. Uh, Job 18 and verse 4 says this, you are only hurting yourself with your anger. So in other words, when we get angry at other people, um, the only person that we actually really uh, hurt is ourselves. The second step is for us to release those who have hurt us. When people hurt us, we have got to release them. From, from that. It's for our own benefit um, more than anything else. We can't get well if we harbor resentment in our life. So the question is, you've got to decide. You've got to decide, do you want to get well or do you want to get even? You can't do both, okay? If you want to get well, you've got to release them. But if you want to get even, what will happen is, and maybe you've tried it, I know I've tried it, and, and when you try to get even, actually, it just makes you feel worse. That, uh, that even if you do feel like you've got even, then you've got guilt and you've got um, all sorts of things that go on inside your life. So the only way to solve the problem is to release them. And the only way you can release someone is to forgive them. And the issue with forgiveness is about us letting them off our hook. In other words, we say, I'm not going to try to get even. I'm going to forgive you. And I think that is so important for us. Now, often people say, but they don't, they don't deserve forgiving. No, they probably don't. But then the issue is, is, but you don't deserve being forgiven neither. And yet God has forgiven you. So the issue is, is not whether they deserve forgiving. It's about the fact that when you release them, you're releasing yourself. There's a work doing in your life. And this is what I'm talking about, is finding healing for ourselves in the pain that we have suffered. Amen? So I believe that is important for us uh, to do that. It's amazing that even researchers, and for, for, for quite a number of years now, uh, in fact, uh, years ago, there was a, uh, an article in Time magazine that said this, giving up that grudge could be good for your health. Uh, and, and there's been numerous studies. And I think it's quite marvelous to think that scientists are finally catching up with the word of God and realizing that actually forgiveness works, that when we release people um, for, uh, in our life, from what they have done, that it does something in us far more powerful uh, than, than it ever could. Because the more that we, uh, we um, keep a hold of things, the more it keeps us in that stronghold, and they're still affecting our life, even when the abuse has stopped. Yes? So I believe that's important. Romans chapter 12, uh, 17 uh, to 19, talks about never pay back evil for evil, Never avenge yourself. Leave that to God. 
for he has said that he will repay those that deserve it. That, I think the problem is we forget this. We forget that actually, although we forgive them, and we, we are the ones that are saying we are not going to get even, that actually God never forgets. God is the judge. God is the one who will balance things out. He's the one that sees things get sorted out in the thing. So I believe that rather than us trying to let, settle the score ourselves, which will cause us even more problems and will open up wounds uh, even more, is we let Jesus settle the score. Yes? And because that's what he's good at. We need to trust God to balance the books and we know that he will do that. Psalm 56 and verse 8 says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. In other words, God has a record of our tears. He has a record of our hurts. And uh, he's, he's keeping it there. And so there's like a remembrance that he remembers when we've been hurt. He remembers when we've, uh, we've cried over the things that have, uh, have done that. So we need to remember to not hold on to these things, but to release the people uh, fr from our sense of justice, yes? And uh, I think that there was a, a thing that years ago I remember hearing, and it's so powerful. I can't remember who it was, but it says, don't nurse it, don't curse it, don't rehearse it, but do disperse it to God in prayer, and he will reverse it. And I think that is just so powerful. The problem is we do nurse it. We, we, we mull it over in our mind, and it gets bigger, and it gets, you know, and we, we kind of go all, all sorts of things, and it just constantly keeps bringing back the pain in our life every time we, uh, we nurse it, and we curse it, and we curse the people that have, uh, that, that, have, uh, that have done the hurt. And we rehearse it. It's amazing how many times... Uh, people want to tell other people about, oh, so-and-so hurt me, so-and-so said this about me, so-and-so did that. I tell you, when we rehearse it, we are making it even bigger. And often what we're doing which with anything that's gossip um, is the fact is we actually are giving someone else a problem that they can't deal with. So, for example, if I say to someone, oh, Kath hurt me the other day, she said this, this, and this, and I said that to Tracy, say... And uh, the problem is, is now is Tracy has now got a problem with Kath because she now thinks, oh, Kath said such and such. But Kath can't go, uh, Tracy can't go to Kath because she's not, it's not her problem. It's not. So what happens is I've then given Tracy a problem. And so now she's got a negative view of Kath, yes, all because of me trying to offload what is uh, where I have been hurt. Do you understand the concept? So when, when we rehearse things, uh, and um, it, it just makes things bigger. It makes it actually... Um, it's a bit like trying to kind of go out with a pillar full of uh, feathers, and, uh, and you just, there's, a, there's a strong wind, and you just uh, let all the feathers out. You can't go back and pick all those feathers up. And when we rehearse our wounds, what happens is we cannot take them back, the things that we have said so it's important to do that the other thing is is to remember is that jesus understands our abuse he understands what abuse is because he himself was abused he was abused physically he was abused mentally he was abused emotionally he was abused in many different ways 1 peter 2 and verse 23 said this when jesus suffered he did not threaten to get even he left his case in the hands of God. Jesus had six wounds right before he died. He had a head wound, a face wound, a back wound with a whipping, hand wounds, feet wounds, and the side wound where the spear was in. But yet the deepest wounds that Jesus had in his life were betrayal, abuse, rejection, hatred, and injustice. He knew every aspect in his life. But I believe we need to deal with it as Jesus did. He's our great example. And how did Jesus deal with that? Well, he just simply said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Jesus understood. Now, you and I think, yeah, they did know what they're doing. But actually, they didn't fully understand and comprehend what was behind 
what they're doing. There's always a bigger picture um, to, to do that. And so it's important for us to do that. So why should we forgive those that hurt us? Well, first of all, because God has forgiven us. Secondly, because we need more forgiveness in the future. We will need to be forgiven. And thirdly, it is the only way we are ever going to recover from our wounds and get healed from them. Amen? So we need to release the right to get even. Hebrews 12 verse 15 says, A bitter spirit is not only bad in itself, but can also poison the lives of of many others. I want to say to you, when you are living with resentment and hurts in your life, as we often say, hurt people, hurt people. Yes, and so it just gets perpetuated in that. Did you know that that, uh, that resentment and bitterness can be passed down generationally? Some, you know, mum and dad or grandparents, whatever, have, have issues in their life and it can get passed down. My key today is let's break the curse. Let's break that generational aspect that can get passed down in families so that the the next generation can live in the freedom of knowing Christ and knowing what it is to live with love and mercy and grace in their lives. Thirdly, if you want to get well, you have to replace old memories, old data, old thinking with God's truths. Yes, you see, our brains are like computer drives. They remember everything. You remember everything you've ever felt, everything you've ever smelled, you've ever heard, what people have said to you, all, all the kind of emotions. Your, your mind remembers all of those things. Um, in fact, I was listening to a, a study that was done a while back, and they were saying that actually the walls of the buildings actually remembers everything that's been said. So that they, they were able to extract from what conversation was said years previously because there was the vibrations were still there in the bill. I find that fascinating, yes? That blows my mind away. But our minds remember all of this. The things we've seen, heard, touched, tasted, all do that. The thing is, is that our brains are not able to distinguish between what's true and what's false. Our brains just remember it. And they just take it on, and it's how we interpret that data that affects us in our life. And so if we believe the false narrative, then we will act on it. So in other words, when growing up, if you were told you were useless, you were no good, you would never accomplish anything, um, you know, you were stupid, you weren't capable of anything, or uh, do, you, do you know what I mean? Whatever it might be that somebody's been said over you, if, if you believe them, the fact that they're lies, you know, is not the issue. The issue is you believe them, and when you believe them, you act on them. And so that is where the, the problem comes, and we end up with things like that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says this about our, uh, our um, replacing the bad memories with God's truth. Yes? It says this, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you eat. The way you think, yes? So the question is, is how do you change the way you think? Well, I'm advocating the first thing you need to do is you need to get into God's word. You need to get into what God says. Get the truth of God's word into your life. Get connected into a connect group. Get around people who who believe God's word, who are going to speak positive things into your life, who are going to believe the best. Amen? Get into those kind of things uh, are the things that we need uh, to do. We've got to start to believe what God says rather than what other people say. And it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter how high up or what kind of uh, um, status they have in life, whatever power, whatever money they might have, we've got to listen to God. What does God say about us? And Scripture has so much to say about who we are, our future, about what we can do in Christ, and those things are there. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says, through what Christ would do for us, and there's the key, what Christ would do for us, God decided to make us holy in his eyes. Without a single fault, we stand before him covered with his love. We stand before God without a single fault. That is amazing, isn't it? Yes, I don't know about you, but I've got plenty of faults. And if you don't think I have, you only need to have a little chat with Kath, and she will enlighten you, okay? Um, But you see, when God sees us, and he sees us because we've given our life to Christ, we're, we're faultless in his eyes. He sees Christ in us, and that's what makes... Uh, the difference. And so we've got to look at what does God 
think about us. You see, psychologists have shown over and over and over again that actually, that we actually um, get our opinion of ourselves from the most important people in our lives. So whoever's the most important people in your life, what they think about you is what you are going to think about yourself. And that, that, that is the issue. So therefore, it, it, it depends who it is. So my thing to you today is, get God and what he has to say to you. Make him the most important person in your life. Make Jesus the most important person in your life. That what he has to say about you will affect your life. Amen? So it's your choice who you make to be the most important person in your life. Because the Bible says that we, in Christ, we are valuable, we are acceptable, we are lovable, we are forgivable, we are capable, we are usable. So the question is, who are we going to believe? Fourthly, if we want to be hidden from our hidden wounds, we need to refocus on the future. We've got to get our eyes off of the wounds, get our eyes off of those things, and uh, we've got to refocus our mind, again, like I've said, onto the things of God. Unfortunately, a lot of uh, counseling and therapy, some of it is quite dodgy, and some of it is quite, can be quite harmful. For example, if, if you go to counseling, not somebody that's a Christian, or coming from a biblical um, um, uh, you know, understanding in the counseling, they end up going back into your past. And all that they do is they're bringing things up and you're going through all the pain. And then they leave you with all that pain again to go to. I want to say to you, God says he's forgiven your past and it's about refocusing on the future. It's about what lies ahead. Amen? And, and that's what we really need to to, to focus on. And so there are some steps to focusing on the future, which are found in Job chapter 11. And it says this, put your heart right, reach out to God, and face the world again, firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory, like floods that are past and remembered no more. In other words, the first thing you do is you put your heart right. Yes, you, 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 you come to God and you forgive the people that are there. The second thing is you reach out to God. You ask God to come into your life. You say, Jesus, I want you to be part of my life. You ask Jesus to take the hurts away. You ask Jesus to help you, to give you the strength to be able to refocus on those things. So you're not focusing on the hurt. You see, the thing is, Jesus is the answer. No one else, nothing else can make that difference and that's what we can do. So we can face the world again. We've got to not just hide in a, in a hole, not just kind of keep things to ourselves. We need to again reveal and walk into the, into the community as it were, walk into, into life again and start to live as God intended to us. So often when people abuse us, it, we, we go into a shell. We go into and we kind of, we don't want to interact with people because we don't want to be hurt. I want to say to you, we, people will hurt you, but you've got to keep walking on. You've got to keep facing the future and keep focusing on the future and because it is so important uh, to do that. Amen? So we need to reveal our hurts, release those who offended us, replace old data with God's truth and refocus on the future. And fifthly, we need to reach out to help others. And we need to do that. You see, so often we, in the physical, we take painkillers. The issue with painkillers, they're great, but they're only ever temporary. They don't take away the source of the pain, but they help you through while the wound is, is healing. And so often we do that in, in our, with the hidden wounds, we go for things that are painkillers, things that maybe will ease it, but it's never going to cure it, whatever those issues are. But I want to say to you, you're never really healed of your wounds until you get to this fifth step. This fifth step is where it reveals your healing. Yes, when you know you're healed is when you reach out to help others. In other words, when you're able to use your hurt, use your wounds, and to be able to help others who are going through difficult situations, either similar ones or any kind of pain, you're able to share your story and you're able to minister out of your hurt and out of your pain. And that's, what, that's called ministry. That's called serving God. And that's what God is looking for each one of us. He's looking for us to not just to get caught up with our, with our hurts, but he wants to heal our hurts 
and, and to heal the wounds and the abuse and all the things that have gone on. He wants to turn it round. And we talked about that last week in Romans 8, verse 28. For, for, God, uh, for we know that God works all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. God can turn a bad situation. If you will let him, if you will work him, if you will apply these principles to your life, you will see God do a difference. Let me just uh, pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you that you are, uh, are interested in every aspect of our lives. We thank you that you see every part of our life, that there's nothing that is unseen. And we thank you, Lord, today for the principles that can help us, Lord, to become who you want us to be. Lord, we don't want to keep living, Lord Jesus, with the pain of the past. We don't want to keep rehearsing, Lord Jesus, the things that have gone on in our life. We don't want to keep nursing, uh, Lord, those wounds. We don't want to keep uh, seeing those wounds opened over and over again. We pray, Lord, that we would be strong at the broken place. We thank you, Lord, that when you heal us, we are stronger in that than we ever, ever have been. And Lord, just like a bone is broken, and then when it's healed, it's stronger there. We pray, oh God, that as, as your people, that we would become strong at the broken places in our life. I ask this in Jesus' lovely and wonderful name. Amen. Thanks for listening today. If this message spoke to you and you would like prayer, or perhaps this is your first time listening, then we'd love to connect with you at www.thedestinychurch.co.uk forward slash connect. You're welcome to join us every Sunday in person or online at 11am.